Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, hello, Calvary. This is Ben, the music director here at Calvary, and I have your word for the day. It's in Matthew 27, 32 through 44. Um, it's about the crucifixion of Jesus, so they decided to put that on me, the music director, and not one of our uh, theologians, masters of theolo theology at our church. Uh, so buckle in. Um, here we go. So along the way, they came across a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. And they went out to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. The soldiers gave Jesus wine mixed with bitter gall, but when he had tasted it, he refused to drink it. After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. Then they sat around and kept guard as he hung there. A sign was fastened above Jesus' head, announcing the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Look at you now, they yelled at him. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well then, if you are the Son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the elders also mocked him. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. So he is the king of Israel, is he? Let him come down from the cross right now, and we will believe in him. He trusted God, so let God rescue him now if he wants, if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. Even the revolutionaries who were crucified with him ridiculed him in the same way. So right away... Um, on, there's only one gospel that talks about, that corrects this here at the end, where uh, the revolutionaries or the criminals that were crucified with him both mocked him. That is inaccurate. inaccurate. In Luke, um, we learn that uh, one of the criminals came to faith and actually went to paradise with Jesus. So that stood out to me. Uh, there's two things that stand out to me in this passage. First of all, it's uh, the central theme of our faith and the Gospels, and that is just how far did Jesus go to save us? And it's very simple. He went all the way. As far as we can imagine, he went much further. When you think about all the aspects of suffering there are in the world, he hit every point of suffering on that day. When you think about loneliness, he was more lonely than we could ever imagine. He was about to suffer on a cross and take on our sins, and his closest companions all abandoned him. There would have been no greater need for help um, from your friends in that moment. Um, physical suffering, the greatest suffering, though, and the thing that I think made him um, pour drops of sweat and blood in his prayer the night before was the separation from his father and the taking on of the sin of the world. I don't know about you, but I'm a creative person. So when I think about that, I think about how did that even work? Did, did each category of sin come on him and he just suffered sexual sin or um, lying or stealing or whatever our sin may be in categories or in milliseconds? Did each one of our sins go through him? It, it blows my mind. And so it brings me to complete reverence of our Father, and I, I hope it does that for you as well. So how, how far was will, Jesus willing to go to pay for our sins and to save us? Far beyond we could ever imagine. It gives us no excuse. He, he left us nothing to say, oh, he went that far, but he left that part out, so eh. no, he, you can't argue what he did for us. The other good point uh, that I had was um, the mocking of Jesus and the people that had him right in front of them and still didn't believe. What that does for me is it tells me that uh, the people in my life that don't believe, that I care about, my lo loved ones and family and friends, um, it's not my responsibility to save them because Jesus was right in front of them and they knew the miracles that he had performed and what he had done for them and they still didn't believe. So our responsibility um, is just to be there for our loved ones who don't know Jesus and to pray for them 
and to not take on that responsibility and burden of their salvation is just not our job. And so <clears throat> those are the two main things that I took out of this. It's, like I said, the central theme of the gospel and our faith, and there's so much there. But um, hopefully uh, this gave some sort of enlightenment to uh, what Jesus did for us on the cross and uh, how much he paid for our salvation. All right, I love you guys, and we'll see you on the next one.